problems as there may be and with all the considerations that, that have to be taken into view in this discussion, that way is heavy as with me. Thank you, Mr. Foster. And now may I invite uh, Mr. Stewart to come now and give his final battle in five minutes, please. I believe tonight that I have given grounds from the scripture that the church ought to sing the Psalms. Argued from Colossians 3 and Ephesians 5. It hasn't been rebutted. It hasn't really even been attempted. We've heard what John Calvin has to say. I've argued from Matthew, Mark, from the Old Testament Psalms. These things still stand. Now, we ought also to say, too, that singing the Psalms, we have a clear warrant for. We want to be safe. We want to be safe before we stand before God on the judgment day and say, What ought we sing? Also, these Psalms are appointed by God and inspired and given to his church. Why do we not go with best? Why do we want something different from what God has given us? <coughs> with regard to the Protestant Reformed churches, um, I want to say tonight that I'm speaking for the Covenant Protestant Reformed Fellowship. And this is our position that we sing only the 150 Psalms. There's a leaflet at the back written by a Protestant Reformed minister uh, on psalm singing in which he says that this article uh, in the church order was adopted by the canons of Dort, sure, but it was because there were some people out there who kind of liked these old hymns and hadn't grasped the glory of the psalms and it was kind of a difficult enough position. There's a weakness there. That's what the man says. And there are some differences of opinion within the Protestant Reformed churches. Some people would like to see the psalms only others would like some hymns. With regard to the name Jesus not being sung in praise, I believe in the regular principle and so I say, where in the Bible are we commanded to sing the name Jesus? But listen, 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 listen now. The name Christ is in the Psalms, Son of God, Lord, Jehovah, Son of Man, all in the Psalms. The stone which the builders rejected, those are in the Psalms. What we do have in the scriptures, though, is a command to sing the Psalms. Now, somebody could say, I'd like, I'd like a Psalm that deals with X, Y, and Z. If God has given us that command. The Psalter is sufficient. We have, well, we have a command to sing the Psalms. That's clearly proved. We don't have a command to sing the name Jesus. We pray the name Jesus, we preach it. We understand in there that you come. Name, hey, over, 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 over. And if you set aside the commandment of God to sing the Psalms by bringing in something else which the Bible doesn't command, see the regular principle would cut that objection way down. And your church needs to start holding to what, what the Bible says and stop mocking those people who say in the fear of God that we can only sing what God has said we ought to sing. And there's a fullness and a richness in the way Jesus Christ is presented in the Psalms which nothing can compare to. One book I was reading on the subject says, you know, you can make all these arguments for it, but the man who sings the Psalms and breathes God's spirit there, he doesn't want anything else. And that's the deepest reason. And with the psalm singing, there is, I suppose we all feel this, a different sort of piety. There is a different sort of piety. There's one piety which says, we want to do what God alone says. We want to be sure it's accepted. And there's another type of piety that says, well, we've always sung the hymns. Can't be a big piety wrong with them. But the church must suit to examine itself in the light of scripture and reform and always be reforming. I should say too, that in setting aside the word of God and singing the Psalms, that in your own hymn book, through 761 hymn books, there are Psalms in there which denigrate the blood of Jesus Christ. Because there are Psalms in there, there are songs in there written by men who are Arminians who deny that Jesus Christ's blood effectually saves. People who believe that Christ can shed his blood for you and you can go to hell. Like, like the Wesley brothers, especially Charles Wesley, men who attacked openly and vigorously truths of the Bible, like reprobation, election, limited atonement. 
There are psalms too. There are songs in there once you set aside the ones with the Holy Spirit, which are written by Roman Catholics, several of them, Irish Roman Catholics, Quakers, Pentecostals, Charismatics. And you know what the Bible calls anybody who denies the deity of Christ? Antichrist. Anti-Christian hymns in your book, written by Roman Catholics and Quakers who deny the Trinity. And there are a number of your hymns in your hymnal which do not sing the name Jesus, especially the ones written by the Unitarians. There's one hymn, a well-known one, written by a man who was believed himself to be the second Messiah. When peace like a river goes over my soul, sing God's word. Thank you very much, Mrs. Chair. Well, I'm sure you will all wish to join me tonight in thanking both our speakers for the considerable effort and time they have given to bringing these matters before us for our consideration. And I trust that it is our prayer together that the Lord would grant us greater understanding in these matters and lead us to a purer and more uh, rich and deep understanding of what it is to sing praise to the Lord. Now I've been asked to uh, call upon the Reverend Brian McClung to close in prayer for us. Thank you. Let's all unite together in prayer. Father and our God, we do bow before thee this evening in the name of our Saviour. We do rejoice in the great head of the Church of Jesus Christ. We do thank thee that he has purchased the Church with his own blood and shed it on Calvary's middle tree. And we thank thee that we can come into thy presence tonight and rejoice in that truth that is revealed in thy word. We do pray, Lord, for that love for the truth of God. We pray, Lord, that we might be those who search the scriptures daily, whether these things are so. Give us a love, Lord, for thy word, and for thy truth, and for the faith once delivered unto the saints. And we pray that in all things, Lord would be honoured and glorified. Even in this discussion tonight, Lord, we desire that above everything else our Saviour is exalted and that his truth is uplifted. And we pray you will bless each one in this meeting this night. Lord, if there is one amongst us who knows not Christ as Saviour, then draw them by the mighty power of thy Holy Spirit unto faith and repentance in Jesus Christ. Lord, over and above other things, we pray that everyone who is gathered here might know what it is to be in Christ, to know what it is to have passed from darkness unto light and from the power of Satan unto God. So, Lord, even as we come to a close and leave this place, Pray that thy truth would search our hearts and drive out anything, Lord, that is not of God, that in every life Christ might be honoured and God glorified. Take of our thanks, we pray, part us with thy fear and favour, for we pray in Jesus' name. Thank you once again for uh, coming out. Uh, the, there is a table at the back with literature. Much of it is free of charge, so do feel uh, free to have a browse there. Um, the hall will be open here until just before 10 o'clock, so for those who, for whom two hours of discussing this matter is still not enough, there's plenty of time to stay for further discussion, if, if that's what you like, and for fellowship, of course, also. So please feel free to linger. Uh, but uh, other than that, good night and thank you again. <coughs>